Hi, everyone. Um, we're looking at notes 5.7, which are on the cosine law. Um, so let's look at the question that we have here. It says, can we use primary trigonometric ratios? So pretty much essentially so Katoa, or um, the sine law to solve either of these triangles, why or why not? So here we've got four, six, five, but this is not a right triangle. So we can't use Sokotoa for this triangle right here because this only works in right triangles. And same thing with this right here, this only works in right triangles. So um, no pri uh, primary trig ratios. because we don't have right triangles. Okay, um, and then can we use the sine law? So the sine law would only work in, if we have at least one angle. So looking at this right here, we don't have at least one angle. So uh, we'll call this triangle A. So no sine law. Because there's no angle. And the only way that we can um, use sine law, because remember sine law is sine of A over A equals sine of B over B, so on and so forth, um, we need at least three pieces of information, which means one of them has to at least be an angle, so this is not going to work. Um, and then looking at this right here, um, if this is A, then this is uh, side A. If this is angle B, then this is side B. And if this is angle C, then this is side C. And the only way we can use the sine law is if we have at least one set of a side and an angle uh, corresponding with each other with that information known. And unfortunately, we do not. Okay, so we'll call this right here triangle B. Okay, and there's no way that we can use um, the sine law for triangle B. Because we don't have a set of an angle and its corresponding side. Or an, its opposite side, I guess we should say. An angle and its opposite side. Okay, so since we uh, can't use Sokotoa and we can't use the sine law, then the only thing left for us to use for these two triangles that we see here is the cosine law, okay? And if you notice right here in triangle A, I'm given a side, another side, and a last side right here. So the cosine law can be used if one of the uh, conditions are met, if you know three sides, okay? So if you know all three sides, you can use the cosine law. And so that's called side, 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 if you remember these, um, these things from uh, grade 10 math from the 2D class, okay? And then in triangle B right here, we're given a side, an angle, and a side. And the angle right here is the included angle between the two sides. So you can also use the cosine law if you know two sides and the included angle. And... Um, when we have the included angle here, this ends up being called side angle side or SAS, okay? So the cosine law, let's see if you guys remember this. So the cosine law is going to say A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times the cosine of angle A, okay? So essentially all you have to do is just remember right here that... Um, the side A right here is going to be isolated. The rest of uh, what we have on the right side are sides B and C with a cosine of the angle that uh, is opposite the side A right here, okay? Now, sometimes it's not always gonna have um, the A being the one that's isolated right here, the one we're trying to figure out. So please be aware that you can memorize this rule right here um, and then just interchange the variables or you could memorize all three different ways to interchange the variables, it's up to you. Um, so another option instead is if I were to look for side B right here, um, it would be B squared is equal to, instead of B squared here, this would be A squared plus C squared minus two times AC times the cosine this time of angle B, okay? Or our last option is to have C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus two AB times the cosine of 
angle C. Okay? So right here it says to solve for X. So first thing I'm going to do and I'm going to see um, what information is given to me. So I'm given a side here. Um, I'm given an angle here and then I'm given another side here. So therefore this would be side angle side right here because I'm given um, a side and included angle in a side. Because I have side angle side I can go ahead and use the cosine rule or the cosine law. Okay, so um, if I wanted to do the cosine law right here, what I would do is um, I would label my sides. So I'm going to call this angle A, which means this is side A. I'll call this ang or angle B, which means this is side B, and I'll call this angle C. So this is uh, side C right here. Okay, so then because I want to find out what lowercase a is right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this pink equation up here. Um, so I'm going to say uh, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times the cosine of angle a, okay? And I'm going to color code this so that we can see this a little bit better. So this right here is b right here, um, this is c, and this right here is angle a, okay? And I'm trying to find um, side a. So I'm going to say a squared is equal to... Now here, B is 11, so I'm going to say 11 squared, okay, plus, and then I know that C is 8, so I'm going to do plus 8 squared, and this should be review for you from last year, okay, minus 2 times the B, which is 11, okay, times the C, which is 8, times the cosine of A, which is 36 degrees, okay, so we'll have the cosine of 36 right here. Okay, uh, sorry, I'm trying to do this in purple. There we go, 36 degrees. Okay, so then what this ends up being is A squared is equal to 121 plus 64, okay, minus, and then 2 times 11 times 8, when I multiply all that together right here, um, I end up getting 88 uh, times 2, which is going to give me... Um, 176. Okay, so this right here should be minus 176 cosine of 36. Okay, now um, I end up getting a squared is equal to when I add 121 and 64 together, I should get 185. So I get 185 minus 176 cosine of 36. So therefore, I can say if I wanted to isolate the a right here, that a is equal to the square root of 185 minus 176 times the cosine of 36, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and type that into my calculator. So um, I'm going to type in 185 minus 176 times the cosine of 36. So I'm going to say 36 cosine, okay? Press enter. That's the number under the radical. I'm not going to write that all out because it's a crazy, wacky decimal. I'm just going to go directly and take the square root of that value right away um, so I don't have to deal with rounding errors and uh, with rounding, um, throwing my answer off until I get to the final answer and I can just round the final answer. So that means that A is approximately 6.5. So here I can say A is approximately 6.5. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and look at question uh, B. This time I'm given a side another side, and a, and a third side. So therefore, this is a side, side, side question, so I can use um, a cosine law, okay? So I'm going to call this angle A, angle B, angle C, it's up to you, whatever um, order you want to do this in, and I'm just going to separate this so we don't get these confused with each other. And this time, what I want to do is I want to actually solve for an angle, okay? So the cosine, the A is what's unknown right here. The A squared, B squared, and the C squared are information that I know. So I know that the side across from the A right here is um, side A. I know that the side across from the B right here is side B. So we'll call this side B in pink. Um, I'll call this side A in purple so I can stay consistent. And then um, this side across from the C, the 17, is side C. Okay? So again, I'm going to write down my formula, A squared. And I suggest you write your formula down every single time until it gets stuck in your head. Okay, um, so I'm going to plug in my information. A is 14, so I'm going to do 14 squared, okay, is equal to B is 16 
C is 17 minus 2 times um, B, which is 16, times C, which is 17, times the cosine of A. So I'm going to say cosine of A because that's unknown information. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and evaluate what I do know. So 14 squared I know is 196, okay, equals 16 squared I know is 256. 17 squared I know is 289. Okay, so we get plus 289. And then I'm going to say minus, and then if I multiply 2 times 16 times 17, I end up getting 544. So you get minus 544 cosine of A. Okay, so I, again, my goal is to solve for A. So this is a little bit different, okay? So next thing I'm going to do is try to isolate this cosine of A. So what I'm what I need to do here is I'm going to um, collect my like terms on my right side right here. So I end up getting 196 is equal to now when I add 256 and 289 together, um, I end up getting 545. Okay, 544 cosine of A. Now it's just a coincidence that these numbers look very similar. Okay, then I'm going to move the 545 to the left side. So I'm going to subtract it from 196. So 196 minus 545 gives me negative 349 equals negative 544 cosine of A. Okay. So then I'm just going to go up here because I'm running out of room right here. I need to divide both sides by negative 544. So I end up getting 349 over 544 because my negatives cancel each other out is equal to cosine of A. Okay, so I've isolated cosine of A, which means that I can say that A is equal to the inverse cosine of 349 over 544. Okay, so then I'm just going to type that into my calculator. So I'm going to take 349 divided by 544, and I get this crazy wacky decimal. I'm not going to worry about writing that down. I'm just going to take the inverse cosine of that, and that means that A is approximately 50.1 um, degrees. Okay, so A here is approximately 50.1 degrees. All right, in parallelogram ABCD, uh, so I'm going to draw a picture of parallelogram ABCD, okay? So uh, this is uh, angle A. I'll start up here with A, B, C, and D, okay? It says the length of AB is 4 centimeters, and the length of BC is 9 centimeters, and angle B is 54 degrees. Okay, um, how long is each diagonal? So um, the first thing I want to do is remind myself what happens with the angles inside of a parallelogram. So if this is 54, then this angle across from it is also 54. And these inside of here are called co-interior angles, if you remember that vocabulary word. And that means that this angle and this angle up here are supplementary, which means that they add up to 180. So angle A, is going to be 180 minus 54, or just 126 degrees. So I can say angle A here is 126 degrees. That's the measurement of angle A. Okay, so, um, and that means angle C is also 126. So it asked us here to figure out how long each diagonal is. Sorry, I meant to say 126 here. So in order to figure out how long each diagonal is, I'm gonna draw this out two different ways. So the first way I'm gonna draw it out is as follows, um, A, B, C, D. I'm gonna find out what this diagonal is and I'm just gonna put this as 54. I've got four here and I've got nine here. So I'll go ahead and figure this one out first. So it's asking me to figure out what this diagonal is right here. So um, I'm going to use um, A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus two BC times the cosine of angle a, okay? So here's my angle A, and I'm trying to figure out what the x is, which is the side across from angle A. The other two sides here are just the ones that are not across from um, angle A, or the sides that touch the angle that's given to me, okay? So I'm going to say here that x squared is equal to 4 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 4 times 9 times the cosine of 54. 
okay? So that means that x squared is equal to 16 plus 81 minus, and then if I do 2 times 4 times 9, I get 72 cosine of 54, okay? So that means that x squared is equal to 97 minus 72 cosine of 54. So then I have to square root both sides to get this x alone. So I get x is equal to the square root of 97 minus 72 cosine of 54. So I'm going to figure out what that answer is approximately by plugging it into my calculator. So we're not going to go to our calculator until we get to this final, final step. So I'm going to do 97 minus 72 times the cosine of 54, press enter, I get 54 point a bunch of decimals. I'm going to square root that answer, which means that my answer is approximately 7.39. So x is approximately 7.39 right here. Okay, so, so um, let's try this again, but this time um, we're going to have uh, A, B, C, D here again, but we want to figure out the other diagonal. So this is still 9, um, since this is 4, then CD is also 4, and this angle right here we figured out is 126. So I would like you to please try to uh, figure out what the length of AC is. So we'll call it Y, the second diagonal. Calculate the value for the second diagonal, and we will take this up um, next time I see you guys in class. Please have an answer so that way you can make sure you get your give yourself a chance to actually try it, okay? That's one thing I want you to do for next class. The second thing I want you to do for next class is I took this chart from the book, okay? But there's actually something on this chart that just does not make sense in the second column. So I want you guys to figure out what does not make sense in the second column and how we can figure, uh, or how we can fix it, okay? So think about those two things for uh, next class, and uh, I hope you have a great day. Okay, bye.